Hi everyone and welcome to week five of the Facebook ads course. This week we're going to be talking about reporting and results management. So just a quick introduction to reporting on Facebook. So after publishing your campaign, you will need to analyze the data and take action to optimize it. So you need to know what's working and apply those new insights to both existing and use the data to inform future campaigns. So this is all about you knowing what return on ad spend you got. We're looking at how you're going to measure the success within your um, campaigns. We're looking at how that's going to help you make decisions within the campaign during its lifetime. So it's not all about setting it up and leaving it run because as we all know, these things can go wrong and you need to pivot and make adjustments accordingly during a campaign. Um, but also it's about looking at how you are going to make future decisions as well about structuring your campaign. So we're going to go through lots of different data types here, how you're going to report it, how you're going to structure the management of these campaigns using the data. So the first thing that you need to look at are what are your KPIs? So what are you trying to learn from your campaigns? What are you hoping to um, get from them? What are you hoping to report back? What are you looking for? What are you looking to learn from the campaigns might also be part of this. So are you running, are you a new business? So are you running some tests to see what kind of creatives are working? Are you looking at potentially what kind of messaging is working? Are you looking at different types of campaigns that and seeing how they drive different volumes of traffic and conversions? How are you going to determine success or failure in that campaign as well? So is it a failure if it doesn't hit X return on ad spend? Is it a success if you learn something? So that can be different for each and every business type as well as each and every type of campaign out of there. And also we're going to look at what are the red flags that indicate change. And for you, they might differ for each strategy that you're rolling out or they might differ for each, um, each campaign type that you're running out. So you might have one idea and you know that you're trying to get X result and then you know that you need to keep an eye out for red flag number one, two and three. And we'll go through the different metrics and how they can indicate red flags for you when you're looking at your reporting and your management of your Facebook ads there as well. So the first thing we're going to look at are the key KPIs within the Facebook ecosystem. So the first one is CPM and CPM is the cost per 1000 impressions. So this is how much it's costing you to get in front of 1000 people. The next one is CTR and that stands for click through rate and a click through rate is the percentage of people who click after seeing your ad. So for every thousand people who saw it, what percentage of those are clicking on that advert? Your CPC is your cost per click. So how much does each of those clicks cost you? An LPV is a landing page view. Now, often I get asked, well, what's the difference between a link click and a landing page view? Because they sound like they're the same. They're both directed to the website. But someone can cl link click on Facebook and never actually reach your website. Maybe your website didn't load. And there's lots of different things that might have happened there between that click and actually getting to your website. And in actuality, if you look at your reports closely, you will see that the volume of clicks can be astronomical in comparison to the number of landing page views. There are very different numbers and it's worth noting that so that you can keep an eye on that as well. The next thing that you're looking at is your CPA and that's your cost per acquisition. So that's how much it's costing you to acquire a customer or to reach your custom conversion or to reach the relevant goal that you're looking for. So that's your CPA. Then your CAC is your customer acquisition cost. And your CAC might look at things outside of the Facebook ecosystem. So you're looking at your cost per acquisition on Facebook might be $10, let's say for argument's sake. But you had a graphic designer working for two hours on the creative that went out. You had an agency managing the campaign. You put X amount into your ad spend. Then there was another four or five hours of overhead that you need to account for. And all of that together actually comes down to your acquisition costs. So the CAC is about looking at the bigger picture of your campaign away from the Facebook platform 
and your CPA is looking at it on platform, if that makes sense. Your LTV, then that's your lifetime value. And your lifetime value is hugely important to consider because it gives you your indicator of your payback window. So if your cost per acquisition is high, but you know that you have, say, compounding revenue because your subscription model then you have lifetime that you have a window of time to pay it back. So say, for example, um, people pay your business $10 a month and the average lifetime value is six months. So the average amount of money you get out of a customer is $60 over the span of six months. And it costs you $20 to get someone into the ecosystem. Then you have enough of a payback window to make that viable. If your cost per acquisition was $70 and your lifetime value was an average of $60 of $10 over a six month period, then you would need to reconsider that model because you don't have enough time in your payback window to allow for the cost per acquisition to be that high. So it allows you to make those adjustments. The frequency then is the number of times a user has seen your advert. And this is important as well because frequency and ad blindness go hand in hand together. And we'll talk about these KPIs and what they mean in a little bit more detail here now. So your CPM or your cost per 1,000 impressions. So this is how cheaply you can get in front of 1,000 people on the Facebook, Instagram ecosystem. Whenever I refer to Facebook, by the way, I'm I'm also incorporating Instagram. Anything within the ecosystem umbrella there, um, I'm referring to when I say Facebook. But the CPM is how well your advert is resonating with 1000 people. You're looking at or you're looking at how much it's going to cost you for that thousand people. Now, what's interesting about Facebook and all of the social media platforms is, is that their core, like their core metric, their core proxy metric essentially is trying to hold people's attention for as long as possible on the platform. So the less your advert is resonating with your audience, the higher they are going to charge you for the luxury of being in front of that audience. If you have a much higher engaging advert, if you have a well engaging advert, then it's resonating well with the audience and you have the luxury of having a lower CPM cost on your advert. So it's really important to look at. Lots of people overlook it, but your CPM is extremely important. Your click-through rate then is how many people are willing to click on your advert. You need to know that. So when you're moving from your CPM into your CTR and you'll notice on the next slide when I go through these again um, with a little bit of the red flag information is that you'll start to see what the domino effect of these can be. So if your CPM is higher and your click-through rate is low and your CPC, everything will fall down once you have these, once once something back along starts creeping up, you're going to have that domino effect. Your CPC, how many people are going to click on the advert and what's the cost of that? LPV, how many people actually ended up on your website? And that's hugely important and overlooked when you're looking at link clicks a little bit too closely. Your CPA, how much is it costing you to acquire that customer, that lead? That could be custom. CAC, what your actual cost is, so your ad spend, your creative spend, your lifetime value, again, just the lifetime value of an average customer. And the frequency is about how often people are seeing your advert. So this is what they indicate to fix. So if your CPM, if if your advert isn't resonating with your audience, your creative isn't resonating, you need to change that. If your CPM is too high, you need to look at your creatives again. Your click-through rate. What if your C- CPM is good? Um, you're getting a pretty good cost to get in front of a thousand people, but the click-through rate is poor. Then you need to look at, is your call to action okay? Is it clear? Make sure no matter what, that you only have one call to action per advert. Don't put multiple goals into each advert. So I saw an advert recently where someone had put, um, it was an influencer advert. Um, so essentially it was an influencer they had used. They had taken that creative. They were running it in their own campaigns. And they said in their copy, like you can click through for more information by hitting the learn more button before you could sign up for our newsletter here or you could watch a full video about the influencer here on this link they had multiple things going on in the copy and that's not how you could structure these things it's right it's going to be sign up for our newsletter sign up is the button sign up below sign up sign up sign up you're just screaming the one call to action you're making it really really clear your cpc then is your cost per click 
And this can vary dramatically from campaign type to campaign type. So if your CPC is particularly high, I'd be saying, well, is it your campaign goal? Because if your campaign goal is your acquisition down the line, your your CPC, all of these are going to be naturally higher anyway. So you need to look at your campaign goals around cost per click. LPV. Is this hugely different from your um, CPC or your or, or your link clicks, essentially? So what you're looking for within your landing page views is how many people actually hit your website? Is this hugely different from your LPV? That's sorry, that should read cost per click or your link clicks. So if your link clicks are, say, now it's normal to see a drop off here. So say, for example, you have a thousand link clicks and only about 500 landing page views. That's pretty actually that's actually pretty normal. There's there's a, there's always bounce. There's always accidental clicks. There's all all of that side to things. So you have to factor that in. But what I'm talking about is if you're seeing a huge issue here where it's like a thousand link clicks and only a handful of landing page views, like two or three hundred, then there might be a loading time issue. You might have landing page issues. CPA. Are your early metrics impacting? Is it the right campaign type? So if your CPA is really really high. Sometimes some of the metrics back along that were, I was kind of mentioning there and that domino effect might be impacting what you're seeing in terms of or might be impacting how much it's costing you to get a customer. So your early metrics, maybe something's wrong on the creative back along or potentially, as we discussed before about campaign structures, potentially you have the wrong campaign structure. And that's hugely important here as well. You need to have the right campaign structure to align with your goal. I mean... If you have a brand awareness campaign, your CPM is going to be super cheap. If you have a conversion focused campaign, your CPA is going to be a lot more cost effective, but these are going to be a little bit pricier along as well. So you kind of need to get a feel for each of the campaign types here as well. So even though all these rules are technically true, even if your CPM is really cheap in a brand awareness campaign, it's not going to have the domino effect right down to CPA unless it's optimized for the CPA. So that would be a different campaign structure. Your CAC then, are there other costs impacting this? So what is your actual cost? And is there things that you can pull back on that are kind of making it way more expensive that are maybe things that are outside of the Facebook platform ecosystem that you need to think about? LTV, is it going to be cost effective for you long term? And how can you maybe improve your retention? How can you improve that life? Can you widen your um, payback window if your acquisition costs are getting higher? And then your frequency. So how often are people seeing your advert again? That is all about ad blindness. People get blind to your advert. Frequency can creep up really quickly in things like your remarketing audience, especially now that it's getting smaller with the iOS 14 changes. You need to be changing up your creatives regularly. Not so regularly that you, to the detriment of something that's working well, but if you see that frequency getting high, it's blending into the background. You're saturating the audience with it and you need to take the step back and and readjust and realign to that as well. So think about changing your creatives there as well. So here's some early metric assessment that you can look at and think about. So this again is just reflecting back on that domino effect. So this is a February campaign for our Growth University and this is video versus image for the same webinar. So you can see here, the cost per impressions, by the way, this is always really, really high for B2B. Um, but we've we've gotten this down a bit now. But you, if you're starting out in the B2B space, this is actually what considered okay, a normal um, CPM. Sorry, not a CPC. Um, but you can see here the click-through rate. So the click-through rate was much better on the video. Then we go through over here and you can see that the link clicks were higher, the landing page views were higher, and then the cost per landing page view was lower. So even though this was nearly the same, you can see that the advert was resonating better in video format and it had that domino effect right down the way as far as the landing page view. So the cost per acquisition, which would be the next tab here, um, which is missing from this screenshot, but that's that's how you can start seeing this. So I could see this this was going to have a problem early on from this stage, and then it's domino affected its way down. So you that's how you can start reading those metrics. And I'm going to show you how to make a little board like this inside in Facebook ads as well, so that you can start making these assessments from within your own campaigns as well. Frequency. 
This is a seven day window from a client account that I worked on last year. So these are two separate campaigns. The budget is far too high on the second one and the frequency is impacting performance. So the fix new adverts and a reduction of budget. So you can see here the difference in the cost per purchase in euro here, 1932. That's extortionate for this particular campaign. At 11.38 is the, or 11.38 is the frequency. So this was a seven day window. So during that seven days, people were seeing the advert an average of 11 times. That's way too high. Then up here, this one, three euro a purchase, give or take. And they were only seeing it about twice in that week. So that's the difference here. Um, this campaign, they were being bombarded with the advert. Essentially, there's no way around it or the, to describe it other than actually it was just in their face all the time. And people just become blind to it. They don't even see it in the feed anymore. If I asked you right now to tell me what the at last advert you saw on Facebook was, unless you purchased from it, you probably couldn't tell me. Um, and that we, we're all blind to these adverts. We don't see them anymore unless they really resonate with us or unless we make an impulse decision on them or we make an impulse purchase. I've made impulse purchases on Facebook and Instagram and I can't even recall some of those adverts right now. Um, so sometimes it's very much in the moment, grabbing the attention, pulling them through, whereas if they're seeing it over and over again, no, it's not going to work. You're just going to, they're just going to switch off to it. So frequency and ad fatigue is a hugely important metric here to keep an eye on as well that will give you some red flags too on working backwards towards your other campaigns and structuring those creatives and messaging right as well. So there's some key problems when it comes to reporting and this is exasperated by the iOS changes. So Google Analytics and Facebook do not work well together. If you are monitoring data from Google to get a holistic view, it will be inaccurate unless you're using UTM parameters and Facebook is also going to be inaccurate if you're not looking at your UTM, UTM parameters and other options of metric measurement at the moment as well because of the iOS changes. So you will need to start taking that into consideration. Um, Facebook also has an analytics view similar to Google Analytics, but it also skews data from elsewhere. So you need to be really careful when you're looking at your data um, within Google Analytics. You just need to make sure that your UTM parameters are set up accurately you need to make sure that you know where and when and why your traffic is coming to your website, how people are engaging on it, how they're interacting. And the, these are some of the key problems typically that come up when it comes to reporting. The other major red flag when it comes to reporting is that your tracking wasn't set up right from the get go. And if your tracking isn't set up right, then your entire the, the entire reporting ecosystem is going to be completely wrong. Um, so that that that's I think it was uh, week two we did tracking. Um, so go back to that and make sure that's absolutely set up accurately. If you're not at that stage yet, you won't be able to get accurate reports until your tracking is set up accurately as well. So I'm going to go into Facebook um, reporting now into the ecosystem so that I can show you a little bit more about how to create these reports from within the ecosystem. So this is Facebook Ads Manager. And as you can see here, you have your campaigns, ad sets, ads. This is a dummy account, so it doesn't have the resource center that you should be seeing in here now as well. Um, but this over here, this columns, will allow you to change what's happening up along here. So like you saw on that screen grab a while back where I was showing you the domino effect through, you can hit this and you can create customized columns here. And what this will do is allow you to create that domino effect. So I like to just take a lot of these out from here down. The, I like to leave the budget in place. And then what you can do is CPM. You can look at your CPC. You can look at your link clicks. You can look at your landing page views and the cost. And then if you have some custom conversions, let's just go with add to cart because this is a dummy account. And let's look at purchase. And then you can just hit apply. And as you can see, these have changed along the top here so that you can read them directly from your campaigns that would be in rows down here. So that's a really easy way just to create a little dashboard for yourself. So each time you can come in and once you've created a custom view, you can save it. So you can say um, custom view. 
So you can look at how, what that domino effect is on each campaign, each of the campaigns as you're monitoring your campaign live within the Facebook ecosystem itself. So that's really helpful and beneficial there. The next thing that you can look at when it comes to these is you can have these rows along here, but you can also create a further breakdown. And there's lots of different things you can break them down by. So you can look at age, gender. Um, so let's say, for example, I hit gender. What it will do is it'll split the add to cart into two rows underneath and say, OK, um, this many male, this many female, this many unknown. And then it'll do the same with age. It'll put that into age brackets. You can look at it by country, region, um, impression device, platform. So platform might be Facebook, Instagram, if you're running across both. Um, so you get a lot of information there. You can also look at it by action. You can also look at it by time and things like that as well. And then the third option within the Facebook ecosystem for your reporting is this one over here. Um, and you can export your table. So this is what you've created here. Or you can share a link to it. And also you can create a custom report. So by clicking this and creating a custom report, you're essentially doing the same thing that you can export afterwards. But it just gives you a little bit more visualization here as well so you have very similar the big long lists of different things that you can select you can search for your cpm your cpcs you can see all of these are bringing our our in from along here that we had um, already set up you can look at your date range you can look at where you want a trend a bar pivot table all of these different things so this is worth playing around with if you want a nice little custom report that you can just change the dates on from week to week to keep an eye on things and this is a really helpful part of the Facebook ecosystem when it comes to metrics and reporting. So you can look at all of these different things. Sometimes you'll see um, new little things in here, add creative, see what's new. There's a new option in here that has like a, uh, in the ads ecosystem that has a little thing like um, your ad is experiencing creative fatigue. Um, I've seen that a few times and not changed the advert because when I did, it actually did worse because the advert was actually working quite well and the audience wasn't saturated. It had just been running for a period of time. So don't trust it 100%. Go, sometimes you just need uh, your gut a little bit too in these decisions. Um, but they're still helpful none nonetheless. They're worth looking at whenever Facebook indicates something like that to you. It is definitely worth um, checking out, making sure everything is okay there as well. The next thing I'm going to show you is the little bit more of a holistic approach, and that is using Google Data Studio. So this is a Google Data Studio report. And what I've done here is I've just minimized the um, person's um, ad account name here. So just for, for their own privacy, I have gotten permission to, to share some of this with you from a few months back just to give you an idea of what this looks like. So this is a very small campaign. It's a purchase e-commerce campaign. But this is what a little build inside in Google Data Studio can look like. And you can add data from multiple sources. So you just get a blank page essentially when you start and you can add data from all of these different resources. So you can include your new UTM parameters from Google Analytics. You can also look at some sheets as well. So if you have like CAC style stuff that you want to bring in, like your, your head count, um, Lots of different things that your agency costs, things like that, that you want to bring in. Lots of different options in here. You Google ads accounts. You can connect all, all of these different things from Supermetrics. It's fantastic. So there's tons of things. You can connect all of your sources in here, not just Facebook. But it's a great place for Facebook at the moment because you can connect in your Google Analytics and your Facebook reports. So you can say, okay, well, Facebook is telling me this. Google Analytics is telling me this from the UTM parameters because everything is changing now with these iOS changes. So this will give you a little bit of a wider window, um, bigger picture to look at essentially. And when you have your data brought in, essentially you can just add, you see the big long list here again that you have inside in Facebook. You get this opportunity to bring these in. Um, even all of these little things are customizable, like add a control. I wanna put in my date range. I wanna put in a filters, drop down list. So, it certainly takes a little bit of work to set up one of these, but it can be really beneficial to be able to keep an eye on all things holistically there as well. So I'd highly recommend digging into Google Data Studio 
and learning how to structure your reports in there as well so that you get a bigger picture view there of your reports and metrics as well. The other thing as well that's worth checking out um, is this tool here from Google, which will allow you to build your um, UTM parameters essentially so that you have your trackers. So you can put in your campaign ID, the source, Facebook, all of that information so that in Google Analytics, you have a little bit of a bigger picture there to read from as well. So thanks everyone for joining me for week five of the Facebook ads course. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at jen at growthuniversity.io. And if you're a member, feel free to ping me in the Slack group. See you next week.